This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hello everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and today we're going to be looking at a new plugin from Topaz called Clarity version 1.0. In all the excitement in recent weeks over the release of Lightroom 5 and the Adobe Creative Cloud set of products, the release of Topaz Clarity seemed to fly a little bit under the radar. But I downloaded this plugin as soon as it became available, and I've been experimenting with it, and I wanted to show you today how it works. I've always been a fan of the Clarity effect available within Camera Raw and Lightroom, and here Topaz takes it to the next level. They've really done some great things with this, and I want to show you how it works. I'll go ahead and cancel out of this for now, and we're going to start back in Lightroom and take a look at just how you might use this plugin. Now, like the other Topaz plugins, you can use Clarity from within Adobe Photoshop, or you can launch it directly from Lightroom, and that's what we're going to do here. I've got this photo that I've chosen, and I'm simply going to right click and choose Edit In. And then I'm going to choose Fusion Express 2, which is the free plugin from Topaz that's used as a launcher for all their software. I'm going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. And in just a moment, once the TIFF file is rendered, we'll get a choice of which Topaz plugin we want to run. And sure enough, here in the list now we see Clarity. I'll click on Run, and the Clarity interface will launch. And it takes a few moments because it goes through a list of presets and it builds previews for each preset. And you can see the sliders on the right dancing around as those presets are built. Now, the presets come organized into different collections that are appropriate for the type of image that you may be working with. But of course, these are guidelines and you're free to experiment as you will. Now, within each collection, as Topaz calls it, you'll find a series of presets, and hovering over each one gives you a preview off to the right. Now this preview can be a little bit clunky, and sometimes it gets in the way. It moves around and kind of jumps in there when you don't want it to. But what I found is there's a little button right here at the top that you can click, and it will allow you to view all of your presets in a grid view. So scrolling through here, we can take a look and see all the presets in this collection. Now there are other collections too, and this being a somewhat distressed urban type setting, landscape may not be the best bet. I'm just going to simply go to the general category and we'll take a look at these. And once again, notice it building all the presets. Now the presets are built and we'll click here to open up the grid. And now we'll see a variety of presets in this collection. I'm going to go with Low Contrast and Color Pop 2 as a starting point. But it is just a starting point. And over here on the right is where we have the ability to interact with the clarity adjustment and make a lot of changes to it. Notice first of all the dynamic section. There are four different contrast sliders and each one works with a different part of the image. So the micro contrast works with the very fine details. We can back that off or we can crank it up. And when we're doing this, we're affecting only those high frequency details within the image. At the opposite end of the spectrum is high contrast, and this is going to work only with the very highest contrast areas. And it's going to ignore the small details. In the case of this image, we might find a lot of parts of the image are responding to the low contrast section here. But the bottom line is you can tweak and pull and adjust these sliders to your heart's content until you get something that really looks good to you. Now in addition to the dynamic section just below this we have the tone level and here we have the ability to adjust the brights, the shadows, and the midtones and perhaps recover some lost detail. So we can bring back up the shadows, we can work with the white levels, we can turn them up and down and so forth. So this is a good way to make a fine-tuned adjustment to your image after you've adjusted the contrast with the clarity sliders. 
If you've used Clarity within Camera Raw or within Lightroom, you know that when you boost up the Clarity, you do tend to block out the shadows or maybe blow out the highlights. And here within Topaz Clarity, the tone level sliders will allow you to bring back some of that. But that's not all. Notice down here we have a section called Masks. And if we open this up, we've got access to a mask in which we can control the amount of clarity that's being applied to the image. Now we have two modes for this. We have the Reveal mode and the Hide mode. And notice the color corresponds to the typical white reveals and black conceals schema that's familiar to all users of Photoshop. So I'll click on Hide, and then I'll make sure that my brush is selected, and now I'll move it out over the image. Let's say I wanted to hide the clarity adjustment just in the blue area here on this building. I can paint, and as I'm painting, notice the mask that's being drawn in the right hand preview window. So up here now we've drawn this mask. And notice this option for the brush, Edge Aware. Because I'm using the Edge Aware brush, it's actually following the rough edges around the plants and the bricks here. We can change this Edge Aware to operate in normal mode. And when we do, it paints right through all of that. There's also a mode for Color Aware. So this allows you to build a very nice mask dynamically on the fly. One thing I don't like about this brush tool is that the only place to adjust the size is right here. As you know, in Photoshop and Lightroom, you can use the bracket keys to adjust your brush, and that does not work within Topaz Clarity. So at this point, we've hidden the effect over this blue part of the building and the clarity effect is visible elsewhere. Now we do have some other controls here. For example, we can invert the mask. And when we do, you can see now the white section is here, and now we're only adding clarity in this area. We can click to invert it back once again, and now we're hiding the clarity in this area. We have another control here at the right to reset the mask, which will remove anything that we've painted. And in addition to the brush, there's also a gradient tool, so you can drag out a gradient. But that's not all. In addition to the clarity controls that Topaz Clarity has, they've gone a step further and added an HSL, Hue, Saturation, and Luminance section. And again, if you've used Lightroom and Camera Raw, you'll be very familiar with this because these are very similar to what you'll see in the HSL section of those programs. So for example, with the hue controls active, we can grab the blue color and we can make an adjustment to the blue, changing it to more of a cyan color or dragging in the other direction to make it more of a magenta. So we can shift the colors here. We can also switch to saturation mode and we can take the very same blues and we can desaturate them almost to a gray, or we can really amp up the color and oversaturate them. And finally, with the luminance controls, we can adjust various colors within the image, making them lighter or darker. So again, these controls should be very familiar to users of Camera Raw and Lightroom. And in addition to the individual colors here, we also have an overall slider that we can use to boost the hue, saturation, or luminance of the entire image at once. But that's not all. Notice down here there's another masks section. And if we open this up, we can see that we've got yet another mask that's available to us. And this mask controls only the HSL adjustment. We could, for example, paint out the HSL adjustment right here in the middle, leaving it active everywhere else. And keep in mind that this adjustment that we just made has no impact whatsoever to the adjustments that we may make to the clarity section. 
so we can continue to adjust clarity and the masks that we've created for the HSL section are independent from the masks for the clarity section. Once we're done making our adjustments, we can also click up here at the top to get a split view and we can see a side by side of the before and after of the changes that we've made. I'll click here again to go back to the single view and notice there's also a button here that we can click to get the original image and then we click it again to get the processed image. So before and after once again. Once we're done making our edits, we simply click OK and the image is processed and sent back to Lightroom. And there we are. We'll go back to grid mode and we can see the before and the after. Now here in Lightroom I've also queued up a couple of other images that I've edited with Topaz Clarity. And keep in mind most of these changes could certainly be accomplished to some level within Camera Raw or within Lightroom, but I still find that Topaz Clarity gives you extra control and the ability to push your images further than you can within Camera Raw and Lightroom. Let's take a look. Here's the before and here's the after. Notice how I used the HSL controls to tone down the leaves in addition to adding clarity on the bird. Here's the before and here's after. I tried this with Lightroom's adjustments and I wasn't able to get as crisp of an image as you see here with Topaz Clarity. Here's the before and here's the after. And notice the difference especially here on the jacket. Again there's before and there's after. So in addition to adding the tonal contrast in the midtones, I've also been able to bring out some of the detail in that area that would otherwise be lost. So all in all, I'm very happy with Topaz Clarity. The interface is a little bit clunky, especially on the Mac, as you see me using here. It works a little bit more smoothly on Windows, and I'm hoping that some of the clunkiness will be removed in the first dot release. But as I mentioned in the beginning, Topaz Clarity has some great features and it's slated to become one of my go-to plugins. You can give it a try yourself, download it for free, and evaluate it and see if you like it as much as I do. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of information there related to photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this review of Topaz Clarity.